What's the best way to stay up to date on the latest research literature in your field? Stick around and let's talk about the four key steps to take today on this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up everybody, my name is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh and I want to warmly welcome you to this episode of Navigating Academia, your leading source for guidance on how to be able to expand your career and influence within academia. As always, I appreciate the love, so please do take a second to like this video, subscribe to our channel, share the video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students. Make sure to hit that bell so that you end up getting notifications whenever we post new content and comment below. You can follow us at these social media accounts. So today we're going to be talking about a strategy that you can use to be able to help you stay up to date on the latest and greatest research literature published in your field. Now this is important for uh, any number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost is that you're going to stay fresh. You're going to know that after you've gotten your education, attended a training, whatever it is that you've used to be able to really jack up your knowledge base on a particular topic, you don't want this over time gradually going down. Fields move very quickly, even in a tiny niche. My last field was what's called violence risk assessment, where what we essentially tried to do was to predict the likelihood of future violence. It's a subfield of forensic psychology. Now the issue is, is that even in that tiny niche, there was over a hundred articles published every year specifically focused on just violence risk assessment. And this was in over 150 different journals over the past 10 years. So it's just wild trying to stay up to date on stuff. A lot of people, they psych themselves out. They say, you know what, I'm a member of, let's say this one leading association within my field, they have an official journal, I get access to that journal, maybe I even get a paper copy that's sent to me once a month, quarterly, annually, whatever. So because I do that, I'm up to date on all the latest research. No, absolutely not. There are tens of thousands of journals out there, obviously, many more probably, uh, just in the English language alone. And because of that, staying up to date on a single journal is not going to get the job done. You can, you know, convince yourself that that's the case, but you're wrong. So the best thing that you can do is try to find a way to make staying up to date really fast, but at the same time very rewarding in terms of the kind of work that you're going to end up finding. Because this can really uh, drive your research, and if you're in a field which is clinical in nature, uh, medicine, clinical psychology, anything like this, uh, you really want to make sure that you're providing the most efficient and effective assessments and treatments possible. Uh, and the best way to do it is to be able to stay on top of the research literature and make sure that your knowledge, which once upon a time was super fresh, stays nice and fresh. It's not going to get out dated very quickly. And if it does, it's going to become outdated a lot less quickly than if you're not focusing on anything. Okay. So I want to give you my personal strategy for staying up to date on the research literature in literally any field. And I'm hoping that you guys can implement this pretty quickly. I would say that if you devote one day, one full calendar day to this, it's going to pay dividends literally for years to come. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Step number one is that you're going to conduct a mini systematic review of journals that are in your niche. So I'm sure that all of you have a research topic that you're particularly passionate about. Let's say that the research topic you're passionate about is psychopathy, the study of psychopaths. That's what you're really into. This could be anything though. Let's say that you're a huge Giorgio de Chirico fan in terms of surrealism in art history, uh, or you're a huge uh, Art Nouveau fan, whatever it is, uh, you're going to have a niche that is your area of current expertise or desired expertise. And what I want you to do is to go on different databases. So go on to something like Google Scholar, go on academia.edu, go on ResearchGate, take a look at things that are field specific. For psychology, we've got something called PsychInfo. Uh, for education, you've got ERIC. For nursing, you've got CINAHL. There's going to be a search database for you. 
Go to that database and simply type in keywords that are associated with your niche. For me, it was violence risk assessment. Uh, so for me, I would have searched for things like quote unquote, you know, violence risk assessment together, you know, forensic risk assessment, sex offender risk assessment, domestic violence risk assessment. I would search these as different terms using things like Boolean operators. This is if you've ever seen searches with terms like all in caps and or different forms of parentheses and quotation marks that are called Boolean operators. And they're what you use in databases to drill things down. And you may also want to really uh, narrow this search to only publications in the last 10 years. Because sometimes journals once upon a time published a ton of stuff on your topic, but recently there's been nothing. And you only want to take a look at journals that have a really recent history of publishing high quality research in your specific niche. And I want you to open up, let's say, an Excel document and literally just write down every name of every single journal. Right, so that's going to be step number one. And as part of step number one, I want you to also Google each one of those journals uh, and find out the official website for each one and put it into the second column. Step number two, so now that we've got that database, I want you to open Google Chrome. Google Chrome is, you know, my favorite browser. Uh, for me, it's better than Edge, Internet Explorer, Firefox, etc. Apologies to the kind people at Firefox, I'm a Chrome man. Uh, so what I want you to do is to open up Google Chrome, and I want you to go to that database that you had established, and let's say that you find 10 journals. Now you're not, you're gonna find uh, many dozens, but let's say you only find 10. You're gonna open up 10 tabs, and you're going to open each one of those different web pages that you uh, identified for each of those journals. You're gonna open one in each one of those tabs. So now you've got a single session, in other words, you know, a single session of Chrome, right, a single window with 10 tabs in it, okay? Now, for each one of those tabs, I want you to go through, because for each one of these journal websites, there's going to be somewhere with something like current issue or this issue, whatever it is, but it's going to focus on whatever the current issue of that journal is. I want you to click on that. Now, why do I want you to click on that? Because usually that link is going to go to whatever the most recent uh, issue of that journal is. It's not going to go to, you know, one specific issue. So if it's January and the link to uh, current issue goes to the January edition, if you just use that same link in March, it's going to go to the March issue, not the January issue. So go to the current issue hyperlink, click on it, and then take that URL, okay? And I want you to uh, essentially leave it there. This is the link that you want to be in that tab, okay? Don't go backwards, don't click on anything else, just leave it. Go to the next tab, do the same thing. Then what you're going to have is within that one session of Google Chrome with 10 tabs, you're gonna have 10 tabs that are all pointed to that journal's current issue web page. okay? That is step number two. Step number three is that I want you under the bookmark menu for Google Chrome, so it's really at like the top right of the screen. You're going to click on it. It's going to give you the options of like history and bookmarks and these things. If you place your cursors so like hover over bookmarks, one of the options is going to be bookmark open pages. And I want you to click that and you can save it as whatever you want. But the cool thing about it is that it will literally bookmark the whole session. So all 10 of those different pages will all be bookmarked simultaneously. That means that in the future, if you want to open a new session, you can literally open the exact one that you have just created for yourself. And you know what that means, anytime you want, if you simply open the session, it's going to take you to the current issue page of all 10 of those different journals. And so that takes us to step number four, which is determining a schedule for yourself to do just that. In other words, it could be weekly, it could be monthly. I would recommend at least quarterly. Some people do it twice a year. Uh, me as an academic, I would do it every month. Uh, but obviously there's some journals that don't come out every month. There's some that come out every week. There's some that come out though once a year. And so you really have to just be aware that you know you are going to have to sift through, let's say you got those 10 journals, maybe only eight of them publish monthly. You got to get rid of the other two because they're you know once a year, but you should still stay up to date because maybe you're not sure when that annual edition comes out. 
you should check it every month. Now, even though I had over 150 journals to take a look at every month, it would take me about two to three hours max, but to do that once a month in exchange for staying up to date on all of the new research literature in my niche, I found that just by doing that, which is very little I would argue, I was one of the most up to date people in the field. People came to knew, know that and they would get in touch with me saying, have you read anything new on this recently? Can you send me any suggestions, etc." And I was able to do that because I was really up to date. And people thought it was amazing, but it wasn't really amazing. That's, I mean, what I'm telling you right now is how I did it. So just make sure that you have a schedule. Sometimes you may even want to pick, you know, the, the first Monday of every single month, I'm gonna do it. Pick something where you can reliably do it and then make sure that you actually follow through on it. So there you go, that's the four step process. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video with me today. And I wanna hear from you in the comments below. How do you stay up to date on the latest and greatest research in your field? Do you have any suggestions that maybe you can share with the Navigating Academia family? definitely comment below. And also, per usual, let us know if there's any topics that you would like us to tackle in future episodes of Navigating Academia, because that's what we're here for. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students. Subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one career mentoring and coaching, please do schedule a consultation call with me via the website below and let's talk about your unique needs, how we can make you more money as an academic, and how we can kind of guide you through the field to be able to make sure that you are as successful as you want to be. All right, everybody, I'm signing off for today, but I want you to remember to get out there, take chances, and be your best self. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.